Hello my soccer universe! Yeah, another Premier League review video. I was not really planning on that, but then I looked at the schedule and it turned out that next week there will be a Monday night game, then the week after there's none, then the week after there's again a Monday night game and I really want to have the option to make a Premier League review on Monday not wait for a Monday night game and so I thought yeah let's set the schedule straight this way. I also did not expect to wear in Manchester United for a second time in, in a row, but statistically their win or their move in the expected standings is only based by Bournemouth, which I do not have current, currently at this uh, moment in time. So yeah, there you, you go. It's United for another um, for another video. And probably deservedly so. However, I think the bigger story here definitely has to be Arsenal. If you are a doubter of Arsenal, uh, then this um, result against Manchester just put down more water on your mills uh, to uh, say that yeah, uh, Arsenal is still the same R. Arsenal for the first time that they are playing someone, they are falling. I mean, I said in the title, Arsenal uh, falling uh, at the first hurdle. While I can see that our argument, I still think that Arsenal has been showing something. It has been a good overall performance. However, you know, you've got to make your chances. You have dominated United, but maybe you were pushing too quickly for the second goal. Maybe. I don't know. Um... It might also be a valuable lesson to see how things are going forward. Um, the weekend, uh, before we go to the biggest talking point, of course, uh, the weekend was also won for the title for the title race, where you know um, City opened a little bit the door, but who is really moving in there? I mean, uh, coming in on Sunday. It was clear that whatever result there will be for Arsenal, they will still be in uh, first place, which was already remarkable. However, it also uh, meant, you know, Liverpool had dropped points earlier. Um, yes, Spurs are hard to beat. Chelsea look a little bit anemic. But especially the last two, you, uh, you don't really see challenging uh, City at this point. On the other hand, maybe City can be the worst uh, opponents. But and again, uh, the Champions League is looming large as well. You don't wanna, uh, and I think this could play a factor because we have now a strategy of boom, 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 boom. And I think there might well be a point where um, uh, teams say, "Okay, we're not going full on now. Let's just take the points." Uh, Liverpool, they seem to be a teeny bit in trouble. I really got to say, uh, I don't think they will be challenging. They might st well still finish second, but I don't think they're challenging for, for the title. Uh, they seem to incomplete. Uh, I think the biggest point, and I guess we will see this in the games, are the multitude, the multitude of refereeing controversies. And I hinted of it in already my short video. I think the most egregious one definitely was uh, the denying of the equalizer of West Ham United at Chelsea. Uh, equalizer would have been well, well deserved, however. There was one phantom call uh, in, at, at Newcastle. I think Aston Villa, there was, I mean, that was not even, even where there was a, um, a offside flag raised where, you know, keep it down, maybe Villa would have, would, would, have, would have scored a winner and also Arsenal should, could have taken the lead except that they were re-refereeing there which uh, is not necessarily the aim of VAR so yeah, high state of emergency in the Premier League uh, on the refereeing front which has been a down point for quite a while I really have to have, 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 to, have to say I do not see this problem as much in Germany yes they're discussing it, but there's never this outrage in Germany for instance I also do not really observe it in Italy or Spain this seems to be a uniquely English problem with the English referees I always feel they're from the beginning uh, you know, they remind me of a class teacher who does not have control of their kids. They say, okay, nominally I have the authority, but I don't. And I think the common the com communication around is just awful. And I really think they should get rid of the line clear and obvious. Just have my, I think I'm still a proponent of VAR. 
And I think I got on board now with the offsides calls, although I sometimes, you know, this margin of offsides still bug me. The handballs still bug me. However, what I would do, I would institute a time limit. They have done this in American football. This is a time that they, they add that the game that starts and stops. They've done this in American football. Where the referee sees for, I think, 30 to 60, or 60 seconds, sees the replay and has to decide there. Not this jiggling back and forth of, of pictures. And I also think included in the picture, I think the referee should get half of the time. He has to see the, uh, the incident in real time. I think it would make it so much more easy and more and not this constant waiting of what is happening. And I also maintain what could help it. I know in the NFL that they discuss it, but I think we should make it a coach's challenge. Yes, review every goal. However, for other incidents, give the coaches two challenges per game. Where they say, okay, this is an incident, I want to have this reviewed. And don't even make it specific. Give the coaches the chance to review, uh, to make a challenge. And if the coaches make a, 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 a challenge and it's, and it's not over, the call is not overturned, they lose a substitution. With five substitutes, I think we can go down to four or three. Uh, I would even, um, one was a day, they lose a substitution window if you want. Something like, lie like that. I think this would make uh, it not so frequent. It would make it uh, a, a lot more um, uh, faster paced. And also people would understand it better. That's the done. Okay. Let's look into the games. We'll start at the Merseyside Derby, which despite being a nil-nil, I think it was the game with the most shots this weekend. And it was overall, especially in the second half, a really, really entertaining game. And I think ev uh, all every team hit the post at, at least twice. I want to say Liverpool even three times. Uh, although first it was Everton, then the double chance, I think. Um, and now I have to, it was um, Darwin. And then um, Luis Diaz hitting a double. Uh, Wol Wolver just, 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 just before the half. Then uh, Everton, I think, a second time. Then they had a goal given that was uh, did disallowed for a then absolutely clear off offside. Van Dijk should have probably been sent off. There yeah, were well, a whole lot of things in, in there. There were saves by the goalies, which made this game actually quite spectacular. Uh, with Pickford really pulling out great saves, none bigger than the one in the uh, in, in stoppage time of uh, when he just denied uh, a shot from Salah, who badly needs to have a big uh, goal, I feel. Um, but also, Allison had a really, really good save in there. That is a game that could have gone both ways. And I have to, have to say, I was very encouraged by what Everton were showing. Uh, so I, I hope they're not getting really in relegation trouble. It's, I actually I, I, I was possible as well. I mean, it is again Neil Mope. I think they have a squad now to, to get that should steer them more towards midfield and not be uh, worried about re 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 relegation. I think there are definitely three worse teams in the Premier League uh, than them. Brentford completely steamrolling leads 5-2. Uh, Ivan Tony, uh, free kick, wonderful. Chelsea West Ham, I mean, I already hinted in the opener. Um, Chelsea again looked anemic and doesn't look right. However, they get, uh, I mean, Antonio gives all the action came late. Uh, also, also, Antonio gives West Ham the lead, and Chilwell and Harvards turn to turn around in a really frantic uh, last minute where you know Harvards get the 88 minute uh, win, win, I think, just before there was a huge chance for West Ham. Uh, then Cornet seemingly has, has, has the winner, but then the goal is chalked off because seemingly obstruction for uh, Mendy. I, you know, when I saw it, I said, oh, this is a very picky interpretation of the law nah nah <laughs> i did not understand that and i can see how um west ham uh west ham and west ham supporters are totally aggrieved with that uh as i said new new Newcastle. there was also a phantom call i i think there should have been a goal for new Newcastle, but okay uh forest Completely threw away uh, a, a lead, 2-0 lead against Bournemouth, who were just beaten a week ago, 9-0. 
I mean, it was not a great game, and you thought that with the, in, in the first one, I thought, thought with the penalty to, to make it 2 2 nil, the game is settled, but very, very quickly, Billing and Sol uh, Solanke have packed it level, and in the 87th, Anthony wins it. And I think those are two of the relegated teams at this moment. Sorry, sorry to say, despite uh, Nottingham Forest buying basically every uh, player that can move. It's probably not going to work, and it's a shame because I think 4 4 4 4 is a team that should be in the Premier League. Uh, Fulham being the sturdy selves, uh, yes, Heuberg and Kane uh, give um, Spurs a tool to a tool lead. They could have been more, more goals, but it's again Mitrovic who gives the uh, game some spice by uh, scoring a consolation goal in the 83rd. And, it, and you never know, it could all, all almost be that there, there, there would have been another one. Again, a goal was disallowed for Richarlison, but this time uh, the offside was uh, quite clear there. Uh, Wolves just got Sasha Kalajcic from Stutz Stuttgart, and he's already out with um, ACL tear. Horrible. This guy would be such a great striker uh, for Austria and for for team, but in, in injuries are really undoing them. And then the big one, Aston Villa against Manchester City. I think Aston Villa also giving a City counterfoil for, for the first time. I mean, the goal that City scored uh, in the early in the in the second half was a goal that I have not seen from City because you know, yes, the cross from the Bruyne, but it's a little bit misplaced. But Holland just uh, with his physicality can convert these chances. By the way, again, I hate those city jerseys, and yes, there will be a Premier League preview jersey pre, uh, review probably come 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 up uh, relatively soon within a month, I would say. Um, however, Leon Bailey gives them Aston Villa an equalizer, and as I said, they probably could have won. There were the chances there, and there was a freak offside call that should not happen. Uh, but I think Aston Villa kind of deserved that draw in there a teeny bit. Yes, see, we're the better team. We don't need to discuss it. City, City is always the better team. Uh, Brighton over Leicester. Yeah, Leicester is a team in, in trouble. I mean, the first minute, you know, not sure take, takes lead, but then they make an on, 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 on goal. It's 2 2 at the half. And then it is just uh, completely the, the destruction. I think Leicester is a team. I, I have the. It's a little bit like Leeds last season, maybe, or, or uh, yeah, a little, a little bit like, like, like Leeds, where I hope that they will just escape relegation. Uh, they have lost too many players. They didn't bring in too many players. The coach is unhappy. I actually, actually think, look, look at the um, uh, international break coming up uh, for there being a coaching change, and maybe the very negative spiral can be turned around and then i already said of, about our united against arsenal quite some at the at, 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 at the beginning um it was a game where arsenal had definitely more control and probably should have taken the lead from martinelli uh that foul by odegaard in midfield was it was probably a foul but it was not a clear and obvious error i think if you judge this within the game I think no one was really aggrieved that this foul was not given. I think uh, everyone would have been right by letting it go. However, uh, in the end, it is turned around. Uh, Anthony scores uh, the go ahead, had had goal in first start. And one has to say that uh, while Ten Hag is not playing the way he wants to play, he actually was pragmatic enough to make the necessary shifts that United actually look now like a team and. Uh, primed to actually take on bigger opponents with their counter-attacking threat. Yes, Bukaya Saka gives them the equal just a few minutes after Ronaldo came on for Anthony, which I found funny. I think Ant Ant Anthony had even another big chance in the first half. Um, but almost immediately, uh, they are called out and Rashford makes it 2-2-2-1 two, two, uh, two, 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 in the 75th. Another one where Arsenal, you know, pushing forward, trying to go for, uh, for the win or trying to go in the equalizer then and being called out on a counter-attack. And yeah, uh, it's another big win for United. And I think the efficiency that United is currently showing on the um, field is something that is, if you're a United fan, probably very encouraging to see. Uh, it was also interesting to get Casemiro on, uh, get, get, to get kind of, kind of a few minutes. 
I think he will eventually start for for for, for United. And Harry Maguire, come 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 on, look, I mean, doing a job, but you know, right on the edge of things. So yeah. In the end, once it was three one. I didn't see Arsenal coming back at all any, anymore. For me, uh, they probably can take some positives in the way they played and reacted to going down and maybe coming back and that they really dominated United for vast stretches of the game. However, it's also a little bit of a uh, devastating loss uh, from a psychological uh, perspective and especially when you have already been labeled a slightly cute and soft team. That was a little bit on display here too. I still think, and we will look now at the standings, um, in, uh, that Arsenal will probably finish top four unless there will be a collapse. So um, at the moment they are in uh, still in the lead, but it's very, 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 very tight. Between Chelsea and Arsenal, there are only five points. I mean, Liverpool... Uh, is in there. Brentford is in. in, 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 in you, know, on, you know, the only team that breaks up the top, the traditional top six, is Brighton. And you know, traditional in a very recent sense, uh, in a way. Uh, but you see also that Arsenal are also on to make it into the Champions League, but Chelsea are not. And I actually think this sounds about right. Spurs, who are not impressive, are more primed to go in there. Um, on the bottom, we see Leicester and West Ham, two teams that we did not expect, although I think West, West, West Ham much more positive. As Villa Everton slowly get, getting out there. Um, but, you know, I'm thinking uh, Nottingham, Bournemouth are two teams that are very likely to get relegated. Um, and then, uh, yeah, Everton is still kind of in there, but I'm, uh, I don't know. Uh, I still don't trust Southampton, for instance, or I don't trust Wolves uh, all that much. So uh, we'll see how this will develop over time. In the title race, we see CD, of course, in cruise control, more or less. Uh, if we look at the performance uh, bars on the right, uh, we see Arsenal, Brighton uh, really stick out as to Fulham. Uh, sounds about right whereas Leicester is clearly the negative part of the season so so so, so far and the expected standings there have been some movements uh towards the bottom end of the, of, of, of the table the Everton Bournemouth and Nottingham uh Fulham uh, we have had we have have had to see but I actually think that I would uh I personally would think that Everton would finish above Leicester and Wolves that's the way I see it here are the fixtures for the upcoming two weeks. We have next week a uh, City against Spurs matchup that I am really looking forward to. Um, and then the week after with another big one with Chelsea, Liverpool. I think this makes it very round and we have a review video then. In any case, please let, let me know what you thought about uh, every, every, everything that I've been talk, talking about, especially the referee con controversy. Give me a thumbs up, enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day.